Okay, AVB and large venue design. Um, our, uh, our marketing department was really busy uh, with um, preparing for Infocom, so I had to attempt graphics on my own. So there will be maybe some, some not so great looking graphics, but one of the things I wanted to pull up was some examples of what we uh, think about as large venue design, convention centers, uh, large meeting spaces, those kinds of things uh, definitely fit large venue uh, design as, as we think of them. And we're, we're currently in, you know, we're, we're at a convention, we're in a hotel, there's, there's uh, various meetings going on at the same time. Um, but they're in a, in a networked world, I think large venue design, it doesn't necessarily mean it's all under one roof. Um, it may be uh, various uh, courtrooms in, in a uh, facility. It could be multiple rooms in a campus, education facilities. Um, obviously, there was some discussion already about uh, theme parks where there's definitely uh, dependencies on multiple systems, but they're, they're broken up in little chunks about what, what's happening in each one, and sometimes there, and there's information that needs to get shared. So one of the nice things about AVB that we already learned today is that it is something that we can use on Ethernet. It's perfect. We can move things across the network. And I don't think there's any of these facilities that don't have a network in them today. They, they've got some type of cable running in there to allow us to do that. So incomes, AVB, and by the way, this isn't an exhaustive list of what you may think about when you're designing a large venue, but these are just things that kind of go through the go through my mind and probably other people's minds, but certainly there, there's the network design, there's the setup, what we've heard a lot of uh, uh, speakers today talk about, the setup part, and I think that, that often gets forgotten about um, until you're actually at the project, and then it's like, oh yeah, I have to set this thing up. So network, network design is certainly important, but so is the setup. Uh, processing requirements, obviously, what do you need to do? Uh, how many audio channels and so on do you need to move through the system? Cabling requirements. Um, one of the benefits, certainly, of networking is the fact that we can reduce our cabling requirements. And then finally, the, a big one always is channel count. Um, uh, Vikram just mentioned the minimum number of channels that they handle in a project, and that, that's a lot of channels. Uh, so moving that around in an, in an analog manner is just not practical uh, anymore. Um, not when we have new technologies such as AVB. So network design and setup. This is where I think one of the areas that AVB uh, absolutely shines. And uh, BIAMP has been involved with uh, networked uh, systems since 2002. So we, we think we have a little bit of experience and then in some pain points uh, regarding it. And one of the first things is when we think about non-AVB implementation, um, you know, as we've, we've talked about today, we have to do some setup to the switches normally. I mean, I'm talking, we're talking about large venues here. If it's just a simple, uh, I don't know, just a simple church maybe, you don't have to do that. But it, anytime it gets complex, um, could be a very large church or a very large venue, there's network, there's the setup of the switches, and then we have to be careful with what traffic we co-mingle. So what else do we put on that network um, or that part of the network? And sometimes we have to get information that is non-audio related uh, on that same network. So we have to be careful with that and therefore use VLANs or those, those kinds of uh, methods. With AVB, um, what I always like to say is the switches just know. They know about this stuff. They know about QoS and they know um, about delivering things in a deterministic way. Uh, they manage commingling traffic, as, as was explained earlier today, in terms of it knows what what's AVB and what isn't, and what to do with it. And that's, in, that's important 
um, because again, we want to we want to go into this system and say with very little uh, thought, just plug things in and make it work. This is a a diagram of a simplistic one, I will admit. Um, of all the devices we see from the audio world living on the network. So everything from the microphone to the speaker, um, power amplifier, whatever, a mixer, an input device, an output device, a pr some type of processing device. Uh, the one thing that isn't up here, but I'm, I'm, we're an audio company, so I'm leaning uh, towards uh, describing how to solve this from an audio standpoint is video, but certainly video could be in here as well. There's nothing to prevent that. Now, getting to this point is something that not only are we talking about here uh, in this room, but we're also uh, demonstrating this at the, at the Avenue Pavilion. Several manufacturers are making this stuff all work together. And there's been a lot of uh, talk over the last year and a half, two years, about AVB and its use and what it can be used for and so on. And coming into the show, I was reminded as I was looking back at uh, the kind of the history of AVB and our involvement that um, one of the reasons there's been a lot of talk about it is we've had to educate everyone on what AVB is and, and how we can get to this point. We're now at a point where we as manufacturers are actually developing product because it doesn't happen overnight, uh, unfortunately, uh, for everyone. We have to get things into the design queue and, and figure out how to make all this stuff work. And we're now at the point where this stuff is working. So it's, it's a cool time, and it's a neat time to be here at Infocom uh, to see this stuff working. The other thing we have to do is not only get it working, but we have to get it shipping. And just a, just a little over a month ago, we, uh, we started shipping our product called Tessera. And I'm gonna talk specifically about AVB implementations in, in the Tessera product. I'm not gonna dive into great details about all the stuff that it does outside of AVB because you can always um, see us at the sh show floor if you wanna do that. I wanna specifically talk about why we chose AVB. So number one, um, and, and some of these points have been, have been made, but I, I'm gonna make them from a manufacturer's standpoint. Number one is uh, a proprietary protocol costs something. There's a royalty fee associated with it. That royalty fee gets passed on to you and then it gets passed on to the customer and so on and so forth. In other words, it's not free. That's certainly one of them. Another uh, big one for us was scalability. Because if I go back to this slide, I mean, I only have a few devices up here, but if we really think about a facility that has, I don't know, several hundred microphones, if it's a conference center, um, maybe many different types of, of uh, steerable line arrays or something that are in there, amplifiers or mixing consoles, those kinds of things. If you think about how many inputs and outputs you can place on that network, all of a sudden, it's got to start getting pretty big. Um, so you need a pipe that can handle all that. And today, there really aren't too many um, on the market that can do that. And especially not one that's open, non-proprietary. So AVB uh, definitely gave us the uh, ability to offer that type of of a product so that we can look at the large venue design and expect things to get down to single channel inputs from a microphone or single channel outputs to a powered loudspeaker, um, all being processed in the middle. So one thing is there's a, a modular approach, scalable. So you have endpoints, you have uh, processing, and all of this stuff can be scaled um, and put onto the network. And the thing that makes it really scalable is the fact that the backbone of the network, in this case, would be AVB. So suddenly I have a much larger uh, 
And as Lee mentioned earlier, it's, it's definitely uh, gigabit is pretty much uh, standard today. It's a much larger pipe that I can start to put more of these input and output devices on. <clears throat> so moving into some of the, the modularity and the, uh, the networkability of the product, uh, certainly it's not only scalable from just the, the type of I.O., but it's things like PoE Plus. Obviously, PoE Plus is something that's, um, Bill mentioned it earlier in their switches, that's becoming more and more prevalent um, as we want to get more power from the network than network standards uh, for power uh, go up. The 420 by 420, um, Lee mentioned that earlier, that's 420 channels by 420 channels out of one single device, okay? So if you had multiple devices on the network that had ABB cards in them, you can increase the number of channels on the network. You can get thousands of them if you would like. And then finally, coming down to ABB and the networking part, obviously it's IEEE standard. It's low, sorry Lee, I've, I'm using latency. It's just habit. Um, low latency, and as I mentioned, large channel capacity. Now one of the things to look at in the, uh, the channel capacity is, okay, 420 by 420. If uh, you may not remember this before lunch, but um, to do that, it, it, that's 60 channel streams. I like to look at things a little more practically in terms of what am I really going to use in, an, in a venue. And you can actually do uh, 256 by 256 in four channel streams. So you have 64 four channel streams coming in and 64 four channel streams coming out. Now that gets, that gets pretty, that's pretty granular. It's, it's four channels. Um, and it still gets you a, a fair, fairly large um, input and output uh, stream. So I mentioned the larger streams of 60 channels, and the thing that to keep in mind is we've been talking about these numbers, you know, one channel, uh, 60 channels, and, and something in between. You can, you can have smaller streams down to one channel if you want. What, what would happen here is essentially that, that just gets scaled. And it's, it's dealt with on the basis of if you really need 10 five-channel streams, then those will get set up. And if you need three 40-channel streams, those would get set up. So there's, there's no rules here that say it, you either have to use one-channel streams or you have to use four-channel streams or you have to use 60-channel streams. All of that can coexist not only within um, the product itself, but on the network, obviously. So a huge advantage in the, from the uh, large venue uh, design standpoint um, when you're thinking about the number of inputs and outputs that you need. And then finally, oh, I inserted presentation time there. Um, and, and, uh, and all of these numbers are, are talking uh, gigabit networks. Uh, here, you have one, you can get down to one millisecond. That's, that's the minimum, and then two, two milliseconds is the maximum. So that's what you would look at in terms of what latencies are possible uh, in this particular system. Now, um, one of the important things is, is talking about things that are real. And here, we have some install, I'm going to give you a few installation examples that have um, appear. they're either being installed or they are installed over the last month. We've only been shipping this product for the last month. There are other manufacturers I know that have been shipping a uh, product longer, but over the last month, um, one of the, one of the uh, larger systems is the Medical College of Wisconsin, and that particular design, they, they specifically looked at the network uh, aspect of what this system can run and how it can be scalable and so on because uh, I forget who, who brought it up earlier. 
um, oh, maybe it was Vikram, um, moving things to the next level. So if you got, as we know in universities, they tend to build new buildings or expand their offerings. So what'll, what'll happen is as they're increasing their capacity, they're going to then be able to upgrade their system as well. So they can either add more channels or add whatever. The other one, which is an, um, to me an interesting one, is Lockheed Martin. Um, now Lockheed Martin actually has uh, an integration arm to it, for those of you that may not know that. Um, it's something I learned, I wasn't aware of uh, a few years ago, but Lockheed Martin has this corporate training center and they did their own installation with, uh, with Tessera for the same reason, for the networkability, and again, AVB, easy easy to install. The uh, Hong Kong Convention Center, that this was actually, I probably should have put that one first. This, uh, talk about being nervous. Um, as Jim was mentioning, manufacturers were all nervous um, at some point. The Hong Kong Convention Center, uh, we started shipping the product, I think on a Monday or something, and by Thursday or Friday, this was installed. And, and working. Um, fortunately, I didn't know that at the time. I learned that afterwards, after it was working. Otherwise, I would have been nervous. Um, <laughs> the, the Cox Convention, um, Conference Center in Atlanta, again, uh, th these are all examples of varying types of venues that are using um, the network ability of all these various endpoints. This one I thought was interesting. I, I can't give a lot of information about it because they're still finalizing. But again, this particular medical college, um, they really went small scale. All of their um, inputs and outputs are on the network. And then they, they have some centralized processing. So th this is um, another example of where these colleges are finding this. And then the last one, I, I can't give you any more information than that. Even I don't know much about it, but there is a military uh, command and control centers um, that are, are looking at and installing ABB into their uh, facility. Obviously, from the military side, this stuff can't uh, fail. Uh, and Lee had a picture up earlier of a business person with a phone uh, you don't want to get on the other side of a general uh, when, when things aren't working. So those, those are uh, real installations, things that are being installed either as we speak or have been installed. And then my final uh, slide to give kind of a, 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 put a wrapper on this in terms of something that came in unsolicited uh, to me from one of our uh, distributors in Europe. And this is, he just happened to send this to me an email after he went and, and set up a system. Again, using, this is all using, none of this stuff is going in without the use of ABB. So this is what um, Chris had to say. And I think that sums it up pretty nicely because that's what we're trying to get to. That's why having things solved at the switch level uh, makes sense because they figure it out. You don't have to unless you want to. I mean, obviously, you can, you can still make VLANs and so on, but we really want to get to the point where we can just plug this stuff in and go and worry about, as Vikram pointed out, worry about the audio stuff and things that are either aren't going right or things that we want to improve there rather than messing around with a lot of network stuff. And I couldn't have said, I couldn't have asked for a better quote. I was uh, tickled when this came in via email. Any questions? No questions. Okay. I actually don't know who's, is Sheldon, you're next, right? Sure. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> 